we are going to look at the introductory um, part of the prose lesson titled as Happy People written by William Ralph Inge. I'll be reading a little bit about the author. Uh, it's good to know uh, the authors and uh, you also can follow this because you have your textbook with you or the PDF. Uh, it will it'll help us to understand the story better because many times when authors write whatever they write, they write from their past experience, they write from their, um, from their childhood, from what they faced right through their life. So there are personal, uh, there is a personal touch whether you like it or not. So William Ralph Inge was uh, a renowned clergyman, scholar and social critic. He studied and worked in distinguished, distinguished colleges in Oxford and Cambridge. He was a prolific writer and was known for his views on philosophy and Christian mysticism. His writings were popular and had an impact in his time. Some of his ideas remain relevant and are ext extremely valuable for all generations. His craftsmanship in writing is impressive and many of his sayings are used as popular quotations. That's a little bit about the author. William Ralph Inge was a renowned clergyman. So he's, he's associated with the church. He's a, like, a, like, a, like a pastor or a father, you know, in the church circles. Um, and he's also a scholar and a social critic, right? Um, so he, he was known for his views on philosophy and Christian mysticism. What is this? Uh, Christian mysticism, when we are talking about mysticism, some of those things that we do not understand so very easily uh, because they are associated with religion. But this man, this author was pretty good at bringing out these secrets uh, through his writing. And you will understand this when we, when you read through this less happy people uh, written by William Ralph Inge. But today, the purpose of this video is to just look at uh, the pre-reading questions and pre-reading questions mind you are extremely important for us to understand uh, the lesson better so I would want you to pay careful attention um, and then note down some of these points when we come back to class uh, I would want a lot of inputs on whatever has been discussed in this video so uh, I hope you are attentive I hope you have a pen and paper and just note down some of those things so that you know we can uh, indulge in a healthy discussion that's basically what our classes need to have more of more of discussion more of brainstorming more of uh, uh, exchange of views because that's basically what I want uh, as the biggest takeaway from all the lessons that we do in class right so without uh, further ado um, the first question, what in your opinion are the things that make one happy? What in your opinion are the things that make one happy? Now basically if it was a classroom situation, I know that you would have just bombarded uh, me with a lot of answers because a lot of people have a different take on this concept of being happy. What is in your opinion are the things that make one happy now this is something that uh, this particular concept of happiness has a different uh, explanations you know you go to religion it will teach you something you go to uh, you know you go to these uh, uh, saints or sadhus on the on the banks of the river ganga they will have their own take on this uh, you, you ask a guy who's, uh, who doesn't believe in religion, who's an atheist, he will have his own take. You will have people who are heavily into materialism, they will have their own take on this. You, will have, you, you ask a young, uh, an infant, you know, going to, maybe someone, uh, not exactly an infant, some, a school boy, a school going boy or girl, they will have their own concept of happiness, a college student, and then someone who's working, uh, who's just started working, will have his own take. And an old man also will have his own uh, understanding of happiness. 
but wherever you are at this point of time you as a 17 18 year old student uh, uh, doing uh, the undergraduate program at St Mary's College if i were to ask you this question what in your opinion um, are the things that make one happy i'm sure there are a lot of different things that will come as answers so that is something that i will leave to you and i am not going to tell you what my take of happiness is because i i have understood one thing there has always been a different answer if you had asked me when i was 5 i had an answer if you had asked me at 15 if you had asked me when i was 17 18 your age and um, when i was 25 and uh, today i will have a very different take on this answer on the on this question so happiness so i will just leave that at the moment uh, for so um, we'll leave that particular question uh, for your inputs uh, whenever we meet for the next session right so the second question um, a very very relevant important question in the present times do you know anyone who is always happy or always sad what is the reason for their contentment or depression two things are being discussed here anyone who is always happy or anyone who is always sad what is the reason for their contentment or their depression it's a very strong term i understand when you talk about depression but a very relevant term something which uh, has always been there but um, uh, nothing compared to the present times so you do find people who are always sad and uh, mental health is uh, something that we need to be taking seriously in the present times especially um, always happy is is a question you know i mean uh, it's a very relative term how do you define it someone who's always happy you may be thinking that let's say you know someone like uh, vijay malya for example you know uh, the the linka bar you know uh, a rich guy you know uh, the earlier days when uh, the internet was had just come in way, you know, we, we used to have a lot of forwards on our emails and one of the mails that I received was the huge mansion that this guy had uh, in Bangalore. Obviously, you know, he's a very rich man. But if you ask him today, as of today, are you happy? On the exterior, he may say, I'm happy. But you know his condition, right? He's at the moment uh, in the United Kingdom. Okay, and India is asking UK to extradite him back to India. He's in huge debts. He's borrowed in millions and billions from Indian banks, and uh, there's a lookout for him. People are looking out for him. The government is government wants him back. And you find a few more uh, of these guys in different parts of the world. You may say, yeah, they've got a lot of money. They're happy, but it's not the truth. So it's not just money that decides whether you're always happy. At the same time. Uh, uh, you may ask uh, a god man uh, you may ask a uh, sadhu from the himalayas whether he is happy he may say he is happy uh, but then that's a very difficult question to ask someone who is happy all the time even these people do go through their ups and downs just like we do so uh, i really don't know whether this is the right question but you know is there someone who is happy all the time i don't think so is there someone who is sad all the time i don't think so unless the person is going through um, mental uh, health issues uh, life always you know has its own highs and lows its ebbs and uh, falls uh, uh, but then that's that's what life is all about so I think that's a, a very important question. Maybe you can jot down in your uh, notebook, you know, list out a few things that make you happy, list out a few things that have, 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 that have made you sad in the past. Uh, but certainly it's a clear no-no for this particular question. Uh, people cannot be happy all the time. People cannot be sad all the time. Right? And the only exception I've given is maybe someone is going through depression. Uh, can be categorized under that, under that category of someone who's going through sadness all the time. Right. 
wins the uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire contest. And you know, um, uh, when you watch that movie, you know, from different uh, um, uh, different parts of the movie, you know, where you proceed from the beginning to the end, there are instances where this particular boy who ultimately make, becomes a, a millionaire um, actually learns a lot of what he learns and, uh, from his experiences. Some of those will be very difficult times that he could have faced in his uh, uh, childhood in those slums in Mumbai, the Ravi, if I'm not wrong. But then, life for him is a mix of both the good and the bad, the happy and the sad. And even in our lives, although we may not have ever experienced or will never experience the extremities of uh, poverty, we all understand that we, we do have our good times, we have those happy times and we have those sad times. So here, when William Ralph Inge, when he talks about um, uh, people in this, in this particular uh, prose lesson, happy people, he is reflecting on religion, he's talking about kings, he's talking about uh, the lunatic, he's talking about uh, what happiness is to old people, what happiness is to the bachelors and the spinsters and to the married. He brings all of this together and uh, it's a beautiful mix. You know, he doesn't just talk about one particular story when you, where you have a happy man and where you have a sad person. So even as we proceed further and look into happy people in its entirety, we read parts of it. Basically, I would want all of you to read this story before we uh, come back and uh, do, uh, do the lesson. I wouldn't want it to be done the way it was done in, at school where the teacher would ask somebody to read the lesson or she, her, he, he or she would read uh, the story. I wouldn't want it that way. I would want you all to read it. Mark those parts where um, the, the story spoke to you or influenced you, affected you. Um, make short notes with a pencil in your, in your textbook itself or uh, on a separate piece of paper or a book, ideally a notebook. And then we come together and we talk about this concept of happiness, sadness, depression, stress. Um, one thing that I can tell you for sure is that, one thing I can tell you for sure is that uh, at St. Mary's College, uh, we give ample opportunities for students to express themselves. Uh, you may be knowing that we have two counselors on board and they are always available uh, to lend a listening ear. Right? So, I would want all of you to um, participate in this discussion because uh, this is something that maybe would give you a lot of inputs for some of those things that you would want to do in the future. Some of you may be disoriented. Some of you may be going through tough times. And I'm sure that the story would speak to you. This prose lesson would speak to you. But that's going to happen when you put in that effort. Don't expect me to come and uh, do a great presentation. And that's not how we are going to, to improve ourselves as individuals and improve our personality. What we could do is we could actually turn this into a great brainstorming session, uh, an exchange of ideas, views and thoughts. And that can happen when you read the lesson. Come to me with those inputs. Uh, we all together in the class, uh, offline or online, we would be discussing uh, before uh, actually going into the lesson full, uh, full time. Right? So I leave these few thoughts with you. Once more, let's go back to these three questions that we discussed. The first question is something that I would, you, I would want you to spend more time with. What, in your opinion, are the things that make one happy? I want all of you to write something, you know, write a paragraph, write a few points, just scribble something, write a few good things that have happened to you. What are the things that make you happy? What are the things that make you sad is also something that I would want you to note down there. Second thing is, do you know anyone who is always happy or always sad? We discussed this at length. What is the reason for their contentment or depression? This is something which has got a lot of scope for further discussion uh, and uh, introspection. 
if you were granted one wish what would you would ask for do write it down and uh, i'm sure it's going to be some uh, some humorous uh, responses from you folks and uh, and we, we are going we are all going to have a good time together in class reading out those things and i would also want to write uh, something for that particular question so i'll stop here and uh, would leave it for you guys to uh, not only um, make short notes for these pre-reading questions but i would want you all to read uh, the story and uh, when you when you come back we will certainly spend at least one or two sessions uh, trying to uh, look into this particular prose lesson by william ralph inge in detail have a great day thank you so much catch up in our next session thank you